Charlie Pride shouldn't have had to remind people of his greatness. He wasn't country music's first black artist, but Charlie reached heights that had not been available to early black singers and musicians in the genre. And he did it by winning over millions of country music fans. However, behind the legend, his life wasn't always as easy as many believed. What shocking secret did he hide? Now, three years after Charlie Pride's passing, his wife breaks her silence. Early life, baseball, and military service. Charlie Pride's journey began on March 18, 1934, in Sledge, Mississippi, where he was born as the fourth of 11 children to poor sharecroppers. Originally intended to be named Charles Frank, Pride by his father, a clerical error on his birth certificate resulted in his legal name becoming Charlie Frank Pride. Growing up in a large family of eight boys and three girls, Pride was surrounded by music and sports from an early age. His elder brother, Mac Pride, even played in the Negro League Baseball before pursuing a career in the ministry. At the age of 14, Pride's mother bought him his first guitar, igniting his passion for music. Despite his love for music, Pride harbored dreams of becoming a professional baseball player. In 1952, he pitched for the Memphis Red Sox of the Negro American League. The following year, he signed a contract with the Boise Yankees, a Class C farm team of the New York Yankees. However, an injury that season led to a decline in his pitching abilities, eventually landing him with the Yankees Class D team in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. During his baseball career, Pride experienced a unique trade with the Birmingham Black Barons while playing in the Negro Leagues. Alongside teammate Jesse Mitchell, he was traded for a team bus, a trade that Pride humorously reflected on in his autobiography. Despite his efforts to pursue a baseball career, Pride's aspirations were interrupted when he was drafted into the United States Army in 1956. Stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado, he played on the fort's baseball team and achieved success by winning the All-Army Sports Championship. When discharged in 1958, he rejoined the Memphis Red Sox. He tried to return to baseball, though hindered by an injury to his throwing arm. In 1960, Pride had a brief stint playing three games for the Missoula Timberjacks, a farm club of the Cincinnati Reds, in the Pioneer League. Despite trying out for the California Angels in 1961 and the New York Mets in 1962, he wasn't selected by either team. Following his time with the Timberjacks, Pride found work in construction in Helena, Montana. He joined the local semi-pro baseball team, the East Helena Smelterites, and secured a job at the Asarco Lead Smelter with the help of the team manager, the smelter reserved 18 positions specifically for baseball players and arranged their shifts to accommodate their games. Impressively, Pride excelled with a batting average of 444 in his first year. Notably, Pride's singing talent caught the attention of the team manager who paid him to perform for 15 minutes before each game, boosting attendance and earning Pride an additional $10 on top of his game pay. He also performed gigs in the area, both as a solo artist and with a band called the Nighthawks. Asarco even enlisted him to sing at company picnics. However, Pride's job at the smelter was demanding and hazardous. He endured physical challenges such as unloading coal from railroad cars and shoveling it into a scorching furnace while avoiding burns from the intense heat and slag. Despite the difficulties, Pride maintained a rigorous schedule, balancing his work at the smelter with his passion for music. In a 2014 interview, Pride explained, I would work at the smelter, work the swing shift, and then play music, said Pride. I'd work 11-7, drive, play Friday, punch in, drive, Polson, Phillipsburg. Between balancing his job at the smelter and pursuing his music career, Pride managed to establish a comfortable life in the Helena area. In 1967, he made the decision to relocate his wife and son to Great Falls, Montana, as his music career gained momentum and he needed easier access to an airport. However, by 1969, the Pride family made a significant move to Texas. Reflecting on their time in Montana, 
Pride's wife, Rosine, shared insights into their experiences with racism, noting instances of discrimination, but also acknowledging that they faced less racism compared to local Native American communities. Despite encountering challenges, Pride cherished his time in Montana, where he felt a sense of belonging despite standing out as a notable figure. His positive memories of the state reflect the warmth and acceptance he found among its people. In a poignant recognition of his contributions to baseball history, Pride, along with his brother and other former Negro League players, was ceremonially drafted by Major League Baseball teams on June 5, 2008. This gesture honored the on-field achievements and historical significance of these players. Rise to fame. During his baseball career, Pride received encouragement from country music stars like Red Sovine and Red Foley to pursue a career in music. He took their advice to heart and began working towards establishing himself in the music industry. In 1958, while in Memphis, Pride seized the opportunity to visit Sun Studio, where he recorded some of his songs, marking the beginning of his musical journey. Pride showcased his musical talents both as a solo performer at clubs and with a four-piece band known as the Nighthawks during his time in Montana. His big break came when Chet Atkins, a prominent figure at RCA Records, heard a demonstration tape of Pride's music and offered him a contract. In 1966, Pride released his debut RCA single, The Snakes Crawl at Night, marking the official start of his recording career. Under the management of Nashville manager and agent Jack D. Johnson, Pride's career began to gain momentum. Chet Atkins, renowned for nurturing the careers of country music luminaries like Jim Reeves and Skeeter Davis, played a pivotal role in shaping Pride's trajectory in the industry. Despite initial challenges, including the reluctance of promoters to showcase a black country singer, RCA Records stood by Pride, releasing his music and allowing his talent to speak for itself. While residing in Montana, Pride continued to perform at local venues, further honing his craft and gaining a local following. His career received a significant boost in Great Falls when he crossed paths with Lewis Allen Al Donahue, a local businessman who owned radio stations, including Kimon. Donahue's support played a crucial role in amplifying Pride's music across Montana. Following the release of The Snake's Crawl at Night, Pride unveiled another single titled Before I Met You, which, like its predecessor, failed to make an impact on the charts. However, not long after, he released his third single, Just Between You and Me, which marked a turning point in his career. This song garnered significant success on the country charts, reaching number nine on the Hot Country Songs chart on February 25, 1967. Reflecting on his journey in a 1992 interview with the Associated Press, Pride shared his perspective on the evolving labels used to describe him in the music industry. He recalled how he was initially referred to as the first colored country singer, which then changed to the first Negro country singer, and later the first black country singer. Finally, he remarked on being labeled the first African-American country singer, noting that despite the changing terminology, his status as a trailblazer remained unchanged. Career peak. The success of Just Between You and Me catapulted pride into the spotlight, earning him a Grammy Award nomination the following year. In the late summer of 1966, he performed his first major show at Detroit's Olympia Stadium. Since no biographical details had been included with his early singles, many of the 10,000 country fans in attendance were unaware that Pride was black until he stepped onto the stage, causing a momentary hush in the audience. However, Pride addressed the issue head-on, acknowledging his race and humorously referring to his permanent suntan, which helped break the tension and kickstart his performance. This concert marked the beginning of a prolific career filled with performances for large audiences, where Pride's race gradually became less significant compared to his musical prowess. 
In 1967, he made history as the first black performer to grace the stage of the Grand Ole Opry since its founding member DeFord Bailey in 1941. Throughout the late 1960s and early 1970s, Pride achieved remarkable success on the charts, with eight consecutive singles reaching number one on the U.S. Country Hit Parade, many of which also charted on the Billboard Hot 100. Pride's popularity extended beyond country music circles, as reflected in the crossover success of his songs like All I Have to Offer You Is Me, Is Anybody Going to San Antone, and Kiss an Angel Good Morning. The latter became his biggest hit, reaching number one on the country charts and selling over a million copies. In addition to his chart-topping success, Pride received numerous accolades, including the Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year Award in 1971 and the Top Male Vocalist Award in 1971 and 1972. Kiss an Angel Good Morning solidified its place as Pride's signature tune, achieving widespread popularity both on the country charts and in the pop music scene, where it peaked at number 21. The song's crossover appeal demonstrated Pride's ability to resonate with diverse audiences, cementing his legacy as one of country music's most iconic figures, 1970s and Northern Ireland. Throughout the 1970s and into the 1980s, Charlie Pride remained a dominant figure in country music, consistently delivering hit after hit. One standout project during this time was Pride's tribute album to Hank Williams' titled There's a Little Bit of Hank in Me, featuring classics like Cow Liga, Honky Tonk Blues, and You Win Again. Pride's popularity transcended borders, as evidenced by his successful tours, including a groundbreaking 40-date tour package in the United Kingdom in 1975. Despite the troubles being at their height in Northern Ireland, Pride's agent secured four dates in Belfast. His performance at Belfast's Ritz Cinema in November 1976 was a pivotal moment, with his song Crystal Chandeliers being released as a single in the UK and Ireland. Pride's visit to Northern Ireland broke the effective concert ban, and he became a symbol of unity during a tumultuous time. His courageous act garnered admiration from both sides of the conflict, and his success paved the way for other artists to perform in Northern Ireland. Charlie Pride's impact on country music was monumental, with over 70 million records sold worldwide, including singles, albums, and compilations. His ability to connect with audiences through his music as well as his contributions to bridging cultural divides, 1980s and beyond, Charlie Pride's illustrious career extended beyond his chart-topping hits as he made significant contributions to various prestigious events and milestones in the music industry. Notably, he performed the national anthem before Game 6 of the 1980 World Series, showcasing his versatility and talent to a wide audience. His rendition of the anthem was also featured at Super Bowl VIII and Game 5 of the 2010 World Series, where he was accompanied by the Del Rio High School JROTC Color Guard, adding a patriotic touch to these iconic sporting events. In recognition of his remarkable achievements, Pride was inducted into the Grand Ole Opry on May 1, 1993, marking a significant milestone in his career. He celebrated his 25th anniversary as a member with memorable performances at the Opry in May 2018, underscoring his enduring influence and legacy in country music. Moreover, Pride shared insights into his remarkable journey and experiences in his book titled Pride, the Charlie Pride Story, published in 1994. In this candid memoir, he reflected on his upbringing in Mississippi, confronted the impacts of racism throughout his career, and bravely shared his battle with depression, offering a glimpse into the man behind the music. Pride's enduring impact on the country music landscape was further highlighted in 2016, when he was selected as one of 30 artists to perform on Forever Country, 
a celebratory mashup track commemorating 50 years of the Country Music Association Awards. Additionally, he made a triumphant return to the music scene with his album Music in My Heart in 2017, marking his first release in six years and reaffirming his status as a beloved icon in the genre. In a testament to his lasting legacy, Pride was honored with the prestigious Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award at the 54th Country Music Association Awards in 2020. Recognized as a trailblazer in the industry, Pride's distinctive voice and timeless contributions have left an indelible mark on country music, resonating with audiences worldwide. As the CEO of the CMA aptly stated, Charlie Pride's enduring legacy continues to echo through the country community today, affirming his enduring impact and profound influence on the genre. Charlie Pride's wife, Roseanne Corrin, Amidst his baseball pursuits, fate intervened when he crossed paths with Roseanne Corrin, a cosmetologist from Mississippi, igniting a spark that led to their union in 1956. Together, Charlie and Rosine forged a resilient partnership, supporting each other through life's trials and triumphs. As Charlie continued to chase his baseball dreams, the couple settled in Helena, Montana, where Charlie found himself straddling the worlds of manual labor in a smelting plant and performing in local bars. However, it wasn't long before Charlie made the pivotal decision to pivot his focus from baseball to country music. With Rosane steadfastly by his side, Charlie pursued his newfound passion with determination. While he bid farewell to his aspirations of joining the major leagues, he embraced a new path in music. Recognizing his talent and potential, renowned producer Chet Atkins signed Charlie to RCA Records, propelling him into the spotlight of country music. Throughout Charlie's rise to fame, Roseanne played an integral role in his success. Acting as not only his spouse, but also his business manager, she provided invaluable support behind the scenes while actively networking with industry insiders to elevate Charlie's career in country music. As Charlie Pride's music career flourished, so did his family. Throughout the late 1950s to the mid-1960s, Charlie and Rosine were blessed with the arrival of three remarkable children, adding joy and warmth to their household. As their family expanded, so did their horizons, prompting a move from Montana to the vibrant city of North Dallas, where they established their roots for the remainder of Charlie's life. The decision to settle in Dallas was not merely about convenience, but also a response to the racial discrimination Charlie and Rosane encountered in various cities they had previously resided in. Recounting their experiences, Rosane revealed incidents where they were denied service in restaurants and faced rejection from realtors when searching for homes. Reflecting on their choice, Charlie expressed, We picked out what we thought was the best place for the kids and also for traveling around the world. And you couldn't find a better place for that than Dallas. The move to Dallas offered not only a larger airport for Charlie's burgeoning music career, but also a more progressive environment that embraced diversity and offered opportunities for their family to thrive. In Dallas, Charlie and Rosine found a welcoming community where they could raise their children with love and support. Despite the challenges they had faced elsewhere, Dallas became a place they could call home a safe haven where they could nurture their family and pursue their dreams with freedom and dignity. Together, they built a family, welcoming two sons, Craig and Dion, and a daughter, Angela. Their household was filled with love, and they eventually became grandparents to five grandchildren and great-grandparents to two. Personal life. Charlie Pride's personal life was as eventful as his illustrious career. Pride faced health challenges, including a tumor removal from his right vocal cord in 1997. Despite undergoing medical procedures, he remained resilient and continued to share his gift of music with audiences around the world. In a heartwarming gesture, Pride surprised the Arkansas Senate during a routine checkup at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in February 2009 by delivering an impromptu performance of five songs, joined by Governor Mike Beebe. Beyond his music career, 
Pride was a devoted fan and part owner of the Texas Rangers baseball team. He frequently attended games and even had the honor of performing the national anthem at some of their events, showcasing his multifaceted talents and passions. In addition to his contributions to the music industry, Pride's legacy extends to his family lineage. He is distantly related to the acclaimed blues guitarist and singer Christone Kingfish Ingram, further highlighting his connections to the rich tapestry of musical talent. Tragic death. Charlie Pride's passing on December 12, 2020, in Dallas, Texas, due to complications from COVID-19, marked the end of an era in country music. At 86 years old, he left behind a legacy that transcended genres and racial barriers. Pride's journey from the cotton fields of the South to becoming country music's first black superstar and a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame epitomized the American dream. In the wake of his passing, Pride's family expressed their wishes for donations to be made to the Pride Scholarship at Jesuit College Preparatory School, St. Philip's School and Community Center, the Food Bank, or another charity in lieu of flowers. This gesture reflected Pride's commitment to education and philanthropy, underscoring his impact beyond the realm of music. Despite the sorrow surrounding his death, Pride's final performance alongside Jimmy Allen at the Country Music Awards on November 11, 2020, provided a fitting farewell to his remarkable career. The event honored him with the Lifetime Achievement Award, recognizing his enduring contributions to the genre. However, the ceremony stirred controversy due to its indoor format and live audience amid the ongoing pandemic. Although safety precautions were in place, the decision to hold the event garnered criticism from some quarters. In his final days, Pride battled COVID-19 in the intensive care unit of a local hospital, isolated from his loved ones as his condition worsened. Eventually, he was moved to hospice care, where he peacefully passed away with his wife, Rosine Pride, by his side. His departure marked the end of an era in country music, but his legacy as a trailblazer and icon will continue to resonate for generations to come. Shocking Secret Revealed Five months after the passing of country music legend Charlie Pride, a shocking revelation surfaced, casting a new light on his personal life. The revelation came to light during a legal dispute involving a Texan man, 41-year-old Tyler Pride, who contested the late singer's will. Tyler claimed that he had been omitted from the will to conceal a family secret and protect Charlie's reputation. The secret at the center of the dispute dates back to the late 1970s, when Charlie Pride had a romantic involvement with an unmarried flight attendant from Dallas, resulting in the birth of a son named Tyler in 1979. A legal battle ensued in 1990 when the woman sued Charlie for child support, initially contesting paternity. However, Charlie later acknowledged fatherhood after a DNA test, confirmed it in 1992. Following the court's order, Charlie provided child support until Tyler turned 18, and the boy's last name was changed to Pride. Despite acknowledging Tyler as his son, Charlie may have sought to limit their interactions to occasional phone calls, possibly out of concern for his reputation and career as a famous country singer. However, Rosine, Charlie's wife and executor of the will, acknowledged Tyler as Charlie's son but argued that he had already received fair recognition and compensation during Charlie's lifetime. The legal battle over Charlie Pride's will, which excluded Tyler's name but listed his other children with Rosine, became a contentious issue. Rosine viewed Tyler's lawsuit as an attempt for financial gain and argued that he only reached out when he needed cash, suggesting a complicated relationship overshadowed by monetary disputes. For Tyler, the lawsuit represents a quest for acknowledgement and a share of his father's estate. He asserts that he deserves recognition as Charlie's son, supported by legal documentation dating back to 1992. The legal decision confirming Teeler's paternity signifies his official inclusion in Charlie Pride's family, 
a matter of significancy to him. The situation underscores the complexities that fame can introduce into personal relationships, especially concerning inheritance and family dynamics. Despite the turmoil surrounding Charlie Pride's legacy, his family honored his memory by directing mourners to donate to charitable causes in lieu of flowers at his funeral. Questions have arisen about Charlie Pride's death. Amidst the somber news of Charlie Pride's passing, questions arose regarding the circumstances leading to his contraction of COVID-19. The Country Music Awards, where Pride last performed, had implemented rigorous testing protocols for all musicians due to the ongoing pandemic. However, despite these precautions, several artists had to withdraw from the event due to positive test results. Marin Morris a Grammy Award-winning country star, who shared the stage with pride at the CMA Awards, expressed concern on social media about the possibility of him contracting the virus at the indoor ceremony. In a tweet, she emphasized the need for caution and urged people not to jump to conclusions without an official statement from Pride's family. Morris's sentiments echoed those of many in the music industry who were shocked by the news of Pride's passing. Dolly Parton, another icon of country music and a close friend of Pride, shared her grief and disbelief on social media. Parton expressed her heartbreak over losing a dear friend to COVID-19 and lamented the devastating impact of the virus. While speculation swirled, one thing remained clear. The profound impact of his legacy on country music and the hearts of fans worldwide.